In this video, we will explore a disposable root server called Segfault. A root server is a Linux host that provides you a root shell. Segfault was designed as a place to test things. Although this is a free service, do not abuse this nor use this for malicious intent. Logging into Segfault is just like connecting to any Linux host. Let's take note of the following messages before we continue exploring its capabilities. There is a waiting time when logging in. Don't expect this to be super fast. Each instance of root shell is actively being monitored to make sure you are not doing anything nasty. Since this is a disposable root server, the instance will shut down when you log out and your data can be wiped out. After the waiting time is complete, you need to provide a confirmation that you want to use the service. Although these wait times are annoying, this is a good way of protecting the service from bots and others that may try to use it unethically. At this point, your own instance is now being created. After you gain access, we can see messages about its other functionalities. For example, its ability to be used as a proxy, places where to put your data, and other ways of connecting. There is also a secret key here, which you can use for persistent connections. More on that later. Let's have a quick look inside the instance. There are only few processes here. This is running on Docker, which explains why the startup times are fast. It's using a terminal colorizing tool. Not sure what is this though. Let's see the current users. Actually, I don't trust that command that much because there is a way on how to hide your presence from the output. But since this is running on Docker, it's acceptable. Linux kernel is quite old, but this is running an updated version of Kali. Let's try to log out and log in again to see what will happen. As I mentioned, the secret key is used if you want to recover your previous session. For demonstration purposes, let's say we want to start another instance again. As we confirm here, this is now creating a new instance. Now, let's discuss the secret key. In order to log into your previous session, we need to set this secret key as an environment variable. Let me show and explain how it is done. There is another message on the top just after the instance was created. It gives you a private key and a set of SSH config. This part tells SSH that the config below is valid only if you are trying to access this host. Do note that this host is not an actual routable IP. This is more likely just an alias. The real host name is on this part. It sets the user for us. Then it tells the config to look for this private key we stored locally on our machine. The secret key is here. This sets an environment variable inside the root shell, which identifies the session. Later, I will show you where is it set and how it looks like. Then on the last line, it is doing a local port forwarding. I believe this is for VNC access because I recognize that port. Let's follow the instruction provided. After the configuration was set up, we can now connect to the host pattern in order to activate those settings. It didn't ask for a password because we are now using the private key provided for our session. If we try to check the environment variables inside the root server, we will see here the secret key. Don't worry, this is randomly generated. I got curious how it is derived, so I looked into the segfault code. First, it creates a seed. It generates a random data and get the first 1024 bytes. Then it pipe it to translate command. Alpha means all letters. TR inverts this set, meaning it will now be numbers, special characters, and so on. Then it deletes them from the 1024 bytes of random data. Then the resulting value is finally piped into head command to get the first 32 bytes. That is how it generates the seed. The seed will now be used to get the actual secret password. It is appended to a string, then piped to a hashing function, and finally turned into a base64 encoded string. Shell parameter expansion will be performed on the new value to remove the numbers. Then finally, it will get the first 24 characters. Let's talk about data. You will notice there is a weird looking file system. This is actually an encrypted folder mounted on slash sec. This is a kind of fuse that allows you to create file systems without doing modifications on the kernel. In segfault, this is used as a place to persist your data so that you can access it again when you resume your session. Let's try to drop a file inside. Then let's exit. Log in again. Let's look at the file. If we want to delete the data permanently, we need to execute destruct command. It will wait 10 seconds just in case you change your mind. Then if we try to log in again, the data is no longer there. When your root server is created, an onion address will be also created for you. Let's go to slash onion. This is a web directory. You can publish pages here or just drop some files to share with someone. You can see here our onion address. Let's open Tor browser and check it. This is just a directory listing, so nothing fancy. 
Let's go back to the terminal and put some files. Let's refresh our browser. This is also a handy feature if you want to use this for a quick file sharing. Using a reverse shell is common in ethical hacking. One functionality of Segfault is that we can make it a listener host for reverse connections. To do that, we need to send a request to this endpoint. That will reserve a port for our root server. Then we need to execute our shell to start the listener. There is an instruction on the top on what you need to execute on the target machine to connect back to your root server. But you can use any technique you want. For simplicity, let's just copy the command in the instruction. The reverse shell comes with a nice setting, so you don't need to export additional environment variables to make it stable and easier to use. As you recall on the earlier part of the video, Segfault root server instance doesn't have a routable IP. But how did we connect to it using this reverse shell connection? I did some digging and found out this is doing reverse port forwarding. This IP is a crypto storm host, which is shared amongst root server instances. If we try to do a scan on this IP, we will see a ton of ports. Segfault is using Redis in the backend to manage the port assignment for each root server instance. If we look at the TCP connections inside our root server, we can identify that there is port forwarding happening. There are a lot more functionality Segfault can provide. One of them is using it as a scanning host connected to an exit node. There is also a lot of built-in tools you can use. I hope you learned something valuable today. If you do, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you and see you on the next one.